All right, back to the podcast. Push-up challenge. Hey, Billy Whirlybur, it seems that we have a bit in common. We're both pilots. Nice. We both yell at inanimate objects that fuck with us. Um, I love that they're fucking with us. That makes them animate at that point, right? Or alive on some level. And we are both measuring our fitness, at least in part, based upon our ability to match doing as many push-ups as our age. I haven't done that in a few years because of my shoulders, but my shoulder has felt better than it ever has. He said, on my way to 50, I was skeptical that I'd be able to do it. But when the time came, I did indeed meet the challenge. So when he turned 50, he did 50 push-ups. Now it's 61. I'm happy to say that I haven't failed the age slash push-up challenge yet. That's amazing, man. 61 push-ups is no joke. That is no joke. And uh, I think it's a great thing to do. You should also do it with squats are hugely important because, uh, you know, you don't want to be that guy that ends up, you know, always cold and has a blanket on his over his legs. You know, when you get that level of old, the fucking Grim Reapers just standing behind you every time you lean forward to grab the uh, remote. If you fucking do a header out of your chair, that's going to be it for you, right? So I would throw some squats in there too. But that's really inspiring. Um, I'm excited because uh, my masseuse, the genius that she is, gave me these these shoulder exercises that are just the body weight of my uh, my arms. And I do them every single day. And then I got one of those little exercise balls there, like almost like a foam roller, but it's a hard ball. Keep it clean, ladies. Um, why would you want a hard ball? You want a hard dick. It's stupid. Anyway, and you just put it between, you know, your shoulder or your back and the wall, and you can control the direction and the pressure. And I basically roll out my shoulders and my back, you know, almost every single day. And then I do that so as stretch you know, the, the up dog or the cobra. And I'm trying to get it to the point where I, I can actually have hips on the floor and go straight up like 90 degrees. I've just decided I'm going to work on that because um, I think that's one of the most neglected stretches out there. If you so as, which is the muscle in the front of your, that connects the trunk of your body in the front to your, your lower body, and it's in the front and then wraps around your back, I don't know, I think back towards your spine or something like that. And if that thing gets tight, which happens if you sit down a lot, like me, flying, you know, um, all around the country, and that gets tight, you know, it starts to pull your your torso forward so your lower back has to engage. So a lot of time, and then your lower back starts hurting. So I find a lot of times when I think I have lower back pain, there's something wrong with my back. I need to stretch out my back. I actually need to stretch out my psoas. So I'm really trying to work on that, you know, just to live a healthier lifestyle. Okay. Um, all right. Going blind drunk. Hey, Billy bitch tits. Um, yeah, I was sitting there going like, is that actually a true thing going blind drunk? And I couldn't find the truth of it, but it was as luck would have it. I watched this episode of the untouchables with Robert Blake, the original one where, um, a, a very, very, very young Robert Redford um, played the bad guy in that one, and he was taking wood alcohol, and they were selling it on college campuses, and two kids lost their sight, and one uh, woman uh, died. And I guess what it is is it attacks... It's not the alcohol... It's what there's some chemical that it gives off, not the alcohol. It's another chemical that's in wood alcohol that attacks the optic nerve. And it could do damage where you're blind for a moment, or you could actually, if you drank enough of it, you'd go blind for the rest of your life. And um, they used to have this thing called, there was another one called, uh, it was always called uh, Jake Leg. And there was another one that would actually attack like your central or something in your brain or something like that. And you'd get up and you would do like this crazy walk because like, you know, it damaged your nerves and you have to like lift your whole leg to make your foot come up. And uh, I don't know. So I learned that since then. But let's see what this person says. All right. Long time listener was checking out the uh, Monday morning podcast for August 30th. And you were trying to fact check yourself regarding blindness due to impure alcohol, but couldn't get a source 
and said you must have been wrong. Guess what, genius? You were actually right. Uh, if you do not properly ferment and distill alcohol, there could be some nasty byproducts included. Methanol. Yeah, that's it. The active ingredient in alcohol is ethanol, which differs from methanol in that it has one additional carbon and a couple extra hydrogen. Methanol ingestion is pretty dangerous. An enzyme in your body called alcohol dehydrogenase metabolizes it into formic acid and formaldehyde, which are highly toxic and can cause not only temporary but permanent blindness. Crazy, right? Uh, What's even crazier is that the treatment for methanol ingestion can include giving the individual more ethanol, a.k.a. get them drunker. This is because ethanol and methanol are agonists, I guess opposites, of a receptor called a alcohol dehydrogenase. Come on, dude. You know who I am. What are you doing with all these big words? Without going into a science lesson, you should have done it. I mean, I wouldn't have retained it, but my listeners would. It's pretty basic. More ethanol results in less methanol being metabolized so you don't go blind from your bathtub moonshine. I've attached a source in case you think I'm bullshitting. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. P.S. Come to Albuquerque, you redhead. Uh, I would love to. I would love to go to Albuquerque. Um, Every time I go to Albuquerque, I think all the wonderful experiences I had playing a very, very super small role in one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Breaking Bad. Um... I still remember that cool airport with that giant snake thing that they have when you go down the hill. Uh, I also remember standing on set, watching weather from like 30 miles away, approaching, just seeing a rainstorm coming. It was fucking amazing. Um, Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous part of the country, Um, New Mexico is. And, uh, you know, a nice amount of people out there. I'm a big, big fan of New Mexico. And also, not to mention that, a bunch of fucking uh, MMA legends have come out of there. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things to like about um, New Mexico. All right, independent woman rant. Billy Boy, saw this on Reddit and thought you enjoy. Girl wants to be an old school woman. No, wait a minute. She wants to be an old school woman. I know she's, this seems like... She's going to trick you. All right. Okay, let's see what she says here. I'm supposed to watch this. 37 seconds. Here we go. And, of course, this sound doesn't work. The sound does not work. Come on. What am I doing wrong? See, this is why I, even if I... Okay, hang on a second. Let me tell you something. You women from the 60s really messed up my life goals. You don't want to stay at home and clean the house, take care of the kids, you know, have dinner ready for your husbands when they got home from work. She's putting on makeup. That is all I want to do. But no, you thought everyone wanted to be independent. I don't. I don't want to be independent. (laughs) Now here I am going to school because I break on good college to get them a job and education. Women. Yeah, she must have had a paper due that day. Um, Yeah, I've heard that argument before. I think you should be allowed to. (laughs) You shouldn't, women, you shouldn't treat another woman as a sellout if she just wants to stay home and take care of kids. And also, that's one less woman you have to compete for in the job world. So, you know, she's doing you a favor. She's taking herself out of the game. Um, I do have to tell you, that woman had a bit of a temper on her. That made me a little nervous. I got to be like, uh, yeah, that would not be a... That'd not be a good person for me to be with my fucking temper. Um, So, anyway, and as much as guys, I don't know, do guys complain about that? I mean, it's kind of cool to have a wife that has a job and brings home a little bit of bacon there. Um, Anyway, wife never wants sex. Hey, Billy Clownface, me and my lady have been married for almost five and a half years and been together over six years. I'm 38 and my wife is 32. Before we got married, everything was perfect. And at that time, I thought I had found the girl I wanted to grow old with. Unfortunately, everything went out the window the weekend we got married. The weekend? 
We didn't have sex before we got married, so I expected her to be ready to go or show some excitement about us having sex for the first time on our wedding night. We got to the hotel, and she just acted like we walked into a grocery store or something. She thought it was weird I was trying to initiate anything sexual with her. Oh, my God. We eventually did have sex, but it seemed like more of a, I guess we can have sex now vibe. The weird thing is she actually bragged about her sex life with her ex that night, too. What? What did she say? You know, this last guy, I used to really fuck him all the time. Oh, man, we had a great time. So then she got with you. So she wasn't a virgin. So she was banging before. She stopped banging when she met you. And now you're on your wedding night, and she's acting like she's at the grocery store. Okay. Since then, it's been constant rejection. I could probably count on one hand... No more than two, the number of times she has initiated sex in our marriage, and she actually barely initiates any kind of physical affection. So I wonder if she actually did have a great sex life with this other person. Um, There was no honeymoon phase or anything. Sex maybe three times a month as newlyweds. Anytime I brought up the lack of anything in our marriage, it always turned into a fight where I was told, you make me feel like a failure as a wife. We are married now. We are past all that. That stuff is for teenagers, and I didn't get married to have sex. Okay, something's going on with her. Did something happen to her when she was younger? Is she gay? You know, that could be a thing. Maybe she's trying to make her parents happy and is living, you know, a life she shouldn't be living. But she not? Do you have halitosis and she doesn't know how to tell you? Uh, the sad thing is, over time, she has let a few things about her past relationship that lasted six years or so come out and she made it seem like she had a long sex life with this other guy. She had the honeymoon phase with him and pretty much got all the sex she wanted before we got married and now just wants a roommate that will pay the bills. She will let me have sex with her once a week, but definitely nothing more. To her, once a week is enough, but I want. But if I want anything more than that, she claims I'm just... I just demand sex from her all the time, and I'm needy because I want a wife instead of a roommate. As a Christian, I don't want to get a divorce. Well, as a Christian, Catholic Church was also falls under the umbrella of Christianity, and look what they did. Okay? Uh, we also had crusades as Christians and did horrible things to Muslim people and all that stuff. So, I mean, listen, if you're not happy, get out of it. He said, but I also don't want to be 45 in a marriage that lacks any kind of intimacy either. At what point do you think it's okay to bail and find someone else? I'll tell you this right now. Your heart, your soul, and everything that makes you an alive person has already left this marriage. Sorry that this happened to you. I know it's going to be painful. Just get the fuck out. And I'm telling you, this time next year, you know, You're going to be looking back going, what in the fuck was that? Thank God I got out of it. And you're going to be happy as hell. Even if you're single, you're going to meet a woman that likes to have sex with you. And it's going to make you feel good. Nobody should go through that. That constant rejection and dealing with that. Okay. This is just like, you know, there's a guy out there for your wife, but you ain't it. So, you know, you're making her feel a certain way she's making you feel a certain way it's not going to get better so you know and you don't want to be old thinking like i should have just got out of it why the fuck did i do that and another thing too how the fuck are you going to have a kid if you're having sex once a fucking week you know if you want to have a kid i don't even know if you want to have a fucking kid but you know you got to bang away that week when she's ovulating there all right shark or lion hey there billy the freckled butthole purr <laughs> I have a question for you. I listened to your segment on sharks the other day and wanted to know if you had to, if you had to choose gun to your head, being eaten by a shark in the open ocean, oh, my God, or be eaten by a lion in the bush. Ah, oh, dude, that's the easiest question ever. He goes, I know either way you're going to, you're going to get eaten. However, my, thing, my thinking is that it would be better to get mauled by a lion than a shark. At least with the lion, you don't have to, you don't have to fight drowning as well. I would like to know what your opinion is on this very important topic. Love to stand up in the podcast. Well, thank you. 
Uh, keep well and go fuck yourself. A South African fan. Shout out to South Africa. Um, oh, a lion all day long. And I am basing that on, you know, Siegfried and Roy. I think that was a tiger or whatever, a big cat. Dude, that thing grabbed him and within two seconds he went limp. And then that was it. I'm not saying I'm happy that happened. It was absolutely horrific, whatever. But like, you know, you're playing with lions and tigers, you know, eventually something's going to happen, right? So he just went fucking limp, choked out immediately. What I love about cats, big fucking cats, is they put, they, it's over. They grab you, you're like, ah, and then they just clamp down and they choke you out. You ask any MMA person, they would rather get fucking choked out than knocked out. They don't want to do, you know, it's just, you know, you go to sleep and you woke up. Oh, I lost. Oh, okay. (laughs) I don't have any cognitive damage. You just go to sleep and you would wake up wherever the fuck you go or you're just dead. You know, if that's what happens, like a squirrel, you're just dead. A shark is going to bite you first. You can't fucking see it. It's going to take a bite out of you to see what you taste like, to see if there's any sort of threat there. Oh, my God. Then it's going to pull you under the water as you're fighting to breathe and stay above the water. Not even close. And the fucking loneliness of being out in the middle of the fucking ocean. You, Oh, my God. You can just... You can take that uh, that shark thing any fucking day, you know. I absolutely. I would almost, if you said, would you rather get killed by a lion or just bitten by a shark? But you're going to live. I know survival, I would have to choose the shark. But just going, okay, it's going to happen. And they drop you in the water just waiting. Fuck that, you know. That's why I can't stand bears. As much as I love a bear, the fact that they just don't grab their prey by the neck and put them out of their misery. They just fucking hold them down like a big dummy, you know, and just start biting fucking, you know, I don't, it's terrible. I don't want to get mauled. Uh, I want to get choked out. That was an easy one. Absolutely fucking easy. Um, All right. Do I deserve to marry a rich doctor? Well, don't marry the person because... He or she is a rich doctor. Marry him because they treat you right. Then the benefits, you married a smarty that's bringing on the money there. All right. Hello, Mr. Bill. Best comedian in the world. Burr, look at that. I get a compliment. I'm a 25-year-old guy from Morocco. Oh, my God. Casablanca. Uh, Who's lost and uh, don't know what to do and need your take on this. I met this young lady six months ago, and we're in love. She's an amazing, nice, and motivated young lady. She's on her fourth year in medical school. Dude, you hit the fucking lottery. She's amazingly nice. She's motivated. She's super smart. Well, I work in an office job that doesn't pay really well and has no future. And she's fucking cool. She likes you for who you are then. The thing is, I've been panicking lately because I feel that I haven't found a path or what I want to do, and maybe I don't deserve her. Oh, Jesus Christ. She's from a rich family full of doctors also, and she's seen and experienced a lot of things while I never did shit and struggled to have a good dinner out during the weekend. We're planning to spend our lives together, and she loves me for who I am. Yes, she does. Dude, don't fuck this up, okay? If anything, go to her and tell her, how much you admire her that she found her path and that, you know, and tell her how you feel. I just tell her how you feel, how great she is. And you almost feel like you don't deserve her and and, and how you want to find your path because you want to contribute to to the relationship more. Do that. Don't, don't sabotage this. He goes, but I don't know if I deserve her and I don't know what I can do to find a good career so I can make, a living in the same level. First of all, don't compete with her. He said, sorry for the long email. Help this miserable guy who's happy for the first time in life, but he thinks he'll mess it up. Yeah, you got issues, dude. You got fucking issues where um, you're saying you're happy for the first time in life. So what it, what it is, is you've been miserable so long that misery is your comfort zone. 
even though you don't want to be miserable, you're comfortable. You know, I know that because I used to be like that. You know, I grew up in a very volatile, crazy fucking situation and world and all of that type of stuff. And I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. I'm going to be around nice, peaceful, calm people. And what you do is you gravitate towards what feels familiar subconsciously without even knowing it. And you're surrounded yourself by a bunch of lunatics and you fit right in because you're a lunatic. So here's the thing, dude. You found happiness. All right. Just allow yourself to be uncomfortable with that and gradually get comfortable with it. And what you need to do is communicate with her. Okay, you obviously are head over heels with this woman. You absolutely love her. You should marry her and use her as an example of the kind of person that you want to be. Happy, motivated, and uh, don't put pressure on yourself to make as much money as she's going to be making. It's like the only person who's, she's not doing that to you. So why do that to yourself? All right? And uh, as far as like finding out what you're supposed to do in life, just follow your heart. I know that's fucking cliche, but like, like think about what you like, what you're interested in, try a bunch of different things. And if there's something that, you know, you find something that you would just do anyway, if you can turn that into a job, you you, you never feel like you're working. So uh, don't fuck this up, dude. That's really going to make me sad if you do that. All right. You deserve this person. And you know why you deserve this person? Because you've been miserable your whole life, which means your family, your parents probably made you fucking miserable. You deserve happiness, but you don't feel you deserve happiness because the people that loved you made you fucking miserable. So get into therapy, which you don't have money for. Maybe that you maybe you got like, I don't know, nationwide health care over there in Morocco. And you just talk this shit out either with the therapist and with the woman that you're with. Don't fuck this up because it sounds like you got a great one. All right. So there you go. All right. That's the podcast, everybody. Um, old Billy fucking Twinkle Toes is going to go work out now. Keep it going. Uh, I'm here in New York City. You know, I'm going to be doing this 9-11 benefit. So I'm going to be uh, fucking out and about walking around, hopefully. Right. Trying to, uh, you know, burn off the calories. Maybe I'll go to a gym, you know, but then they always want, can I see your driver's license? It's like, can you, well, how about I just give you my fucking credit card? And then you give them the driver's license and then they're putting it in the computer. It's like, what are you doing? You're not the government. Oh, we don't do anything with this. No, sir, you don't do anything with this. Then it goes into the computer. Then where does it go? You cunt. So I think I'm just going to, uh, I don't know, walk to the comedy clubs. I have no idea what I'm going to do here. But I'm going to stay away from the bagels and the cream cheese. I'm going to stay away from the pizza. I'm going to stay away from all of that shit because uh, I actually got a fucking steak and cheese. I got a great one. I got a Joe Bartnick suggested when we were on our way up to uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We went through uh, the great city of Philadelphia that for some reason does not get the good planes when you fly to it. Uh, I took a picture. It was Tony something. Not Tony O's. What the fuck was it? Tony L's. What the hell was it? Come on, come on. Tony Luke's. Tony Luke's. A great, great goddamn cheesesteak. I ate that thing, man. I wasn't hungry for the rest of the afternoon. Into the evening. I didn't. I had two shows last night in Bethlehem, which, by the way, what an amazing city that is. Just fucking beautiful. I mean, Pennsylvania is so underrated how beautiful the state is with all the trees and the rivers and all that type of stuff. Granted, you pull in and there's a fucking steel mill about ready to fall down. I'm sure, you know, that they, you know, it definitely looked like, uh, you know, I was joking with them that they, they probably filmed a couple episodes of the first 48 there, but you can see the bones, the bones. They, they got a good structure there. It is a beautiful town. So um, I've always loved those old, you know, Rust Belt type of towns and watching them all slowly coming back. First Pittsburgh, Cleveland, uh, Detroit was even coming around. I don't know where they're at now, the stupid pandemic shit, but hopefully they're coming around too. Uh, Buffalo is another one that I love. I love all of that shit. Um, All right. So anyways, that is the podcast for this week. Go fuck yourselves. NFL uh, football kicks off this Thursday. 
I guess is it, it's Tampa versus Dallas. Tom Brady going for ring number eight, which would tie him with Bill Belichick. Don't ever forget he has two as a defensive coordinator when he was with the G-Men. Um, all right, that's it, everybody. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday.